I'm with IFC. I, mean, I can't believe I got this thing done because it was just, I never turned in a script. Every year I would turn in an outline. Of, I would write a narrative, a couple page narrative of what happens this year. I would have to do that to get the budget. And then, but they never, I never had to turn in like actual dialogue or script. But I mean, I, I would do it. We, we had it, but that wasn't what it was contingent on. They had signed off on the idea of it and believed in it enough. So, now, wasn't, wasn't there one year when you actually couldn't get money from them, but um, you, you had to. Get some insurance money of your yeah, own? Yeah, I, I put up a lot of money along the way myself just because it was kind of a calendar. Well, J Jonathan, I mean, it was the weirdest project, and I still can't believe, I don't know, understand how he did it, but he would always remind me how difficult it was to go into these board meetings, quarterly meetings, and they're, okay, Jonathan, what's this thing on the books that you've spent, you know, all these hundreds of thousands on that's not coming out for six more years, you know. <laughs> what what the hell you you know, what the hell's this? And he said, Yeah, I had another meeting. He always felt a little beat up. Yeah, I had to, you know, do the song and dance. And I'm like, sorry man, you know, I think it's gonna be good, you know. And when they started, when they started in O two, they were producing a lot of films. You know, IFC back then they were producing 10, 20 films a year, you know, low budget. You know, they had a big library and everything. And then over the economics of the indie world shifted so much that they really became a produ uh, distributor and quit producing because there were so many films out there. There was kind of a glut. So I think their whole business model slowly shifted during the life of this film. And I remember running into Jonathan at a film festival or something. He walked by me and says, we, you know, we have one film in production. <laughs> I'm like, Okay. <laughs> you know, he was, he was just, we had this fun relationship. All, and it's amazing that he still has, you know, 12 years later, people always ask, well, what if something happened? What if one of the cast members quit or, heaven forbid, someone died? Or, you know, there are always, you know, the bad theoretical things that could have happened. And I said, well, I always felt we would all be here. But the odds that the, guy, the executive who greenlit the movie in this industry would still have his job 12 years later, that I wouldn't have bet on at all. And not only did he still have his job, he ends up distributing the movie. So it was kind of a wonderful, you know, life project experience for all of us, you know. Was there stuff that happened with, with the kids that, that you incorporated along the way? Not really. I think there's a misunderstanding that I like would take things from their life and put it in the movie. I never really did that. I don't think there's one thing in this movie that was from Eller or Lorelai's actual life like an incident or something that happened to them that ended up in the movie. I was always gauging, um, particularly Eller, um, you know, where he was at developmentally for what the next year would contain or, you know, what we were about to do next. You know, that was important to me. I didn't want him to do something on screen, his character. To, I just wanted it to mirror his actual development. I didn't want him drinking a beer at a camp out before he had actually done that or, you know, with whatever would go on with girls or anything. So I was always just kind of aware of where he was. And then I would pull scenes up and move them back accordingly. Think, you know, scenes I wanted to do. So 